I beat Sekiro, but every boss I would get a random number of tries, and if I went above that, I had to spin the wheel. I started out the game, and it was fun, I can't lie, and eventually, I reached Naomori Kawarada. Also, I know the color is messed up, I'll fix it later though, something was wrong with my recording. So I got 68 tries, and they were going pretty well at the beginning. Only at 14 tries, I was making progress like this. Oh my god, I'm actually crazy. Ooh, okay, second health bar. I was getting second phase runs, and it was clear that I only needed a couple more attempts. And pretty soon, this happened. Yo, let's go! First boss done. Oh. And that's the first boss done. Scar free. Next up, I was strolling along, having some fun in the game, until I reached the living embodiment of a menace to society. This change ogre really came at me mad. Now so far, I learned how to parry, and the boss was teaching me the opposite. I had to dodge and meet the health bar, rather than filling up this parry dodge. I was struggling at the beginning, but after getting in the rhythm, my improvement was quite fast. I got 68 tries on this one, and don't worry, I realized here that I needed stricter limits, so I put it to 50 from now on. But either way, I continued and tried to maximize my chances of victory before the fight. I would kill two minions before the ogre notices me, and in this spare time, I would be able to get around 7 hits in. With everything set up, I left it up to time. I kept going, putting countless attempts in, to no avail, until this happened. Oh! Yo! That's it! That's the kill! Oh my god. I continued my travel until I came across General Tenzin Yamauchi, but this time, I just kept going, and left this man looking puzzled sitting right here. But soon enough, I encountered my next foe, the giant caterpillar. Now, I was going crazy when I saw this because I didn't think this game was like that plane of my fears. He was almost as scary as in the book. I was making my way down until I reached this place, and the scenery here was crazy. My fault, but I wasn't here for the scenery. This time, I had 39 tries. I knew it might be close this time, so after a couple tries, I decided light save. I had been trying to parry each attack with individuals, but it was clear I didn't have the skill yet. I went looking for some guides, and this man Tyrannicon came in clutch, telling me to just hold block instead of parry, and this strategy was working quite well. Okay, we're close, we're close. Don't throw here. Okay, that's it. In this run, I was able to hit second phase. Oh, I completely did not see that. Ooh, this might be over. This might be the end of it. Man. Let's go! Finally, I continued on to a boss that I was nearly positive I couldn't beat. Why? Because I got eight tries, but still, I was determined to give it my best shot. I basically had to get the blazing bowl to clear the battlefield, and from here, I just tried to parry him. I quickly started realizing that this wasn't going to work, and soon enough, I hit eight tries. For my first challenge, I had to drink some olive oil. Damn. That stuff was bad. That taste was hella strong, and I couldn't even get it all in one sip either. I kept trying at this, but nothing seemed to be working, so I went crazy with the most genius strat possible, sitting behind the boss. Next up, I was headed to the gun fort, and I know this is the wrong way, but the game's been making no sense. So I kept going on until I ran into this giraffe centipede goofy looking man. With all 37 tries, I was confident nothing could go wrong, especially on some weird mini boss, right? Well, essentially, the way to win was fan parry on these 9 attacks. Eventually, I realized the 9th one was delayed, and with that, the first phase was easy. Second phase is basically the same, but he gets this special attack where you have to jump up, but I never felt like I was in the air line. Well, my, I had no idea. Why should this be possible? Like, it's so random, too. But apparently, you can double jump off the centipede's neck and dodge the attack. I gotta be pretty dumb for that. And at last, at 16 tries, I was victorious. After this, I was told I needed a key. Okay, you know, so I looked around. No key. I looked in this secret fort. No key to be found. But I looked it up, and turns out I need to head back here and do a side quest. No problem, I guess. But this was the hardest part of this whole challenge. I had to kill rats. Now, the first two rats are fine. I can get an easy stealth kill. But the third has a hat on it. And this is no ordinary hat, it's just a shield. No matter what I did, I just couldn't get past this, so I had to try something else. If I pick up this little bell here, go over to this place and ring it, I could get put in some type of dream world. I explored a little, but I had one goal in mind, get the axe for aesthetic. Just let me break the shield and go crazy on these rats. But damn, this was still harder than Gaelbu. I was able to continue to Jintuka Saze, and damn, I kept getting lucky with these tries. But my first few weren't going well. I could just keep going and be fine, but I wanted to win fast. I thought maybe using my mouse to parry would be better for this fight, considering it's basically spamming the same button. Pretty quickly, I realized how much better this was and was able to move on. But my next stop would be a notorious one, Genichiro Ashina. I knew I'd have no chance with this boss unless I got something in the 50 round. Yeah, so I got three tries and got right to it. And damn, I got color now, this game looking nice. Look how much better you can see me die. Oh, hold up, this is my last try, you think I'm going clutch? 
No, I got kind of close though. This time the wheel landed on cat food and I could not eat that. It was really bad. I continued on to the boss, but my efforts honestly felt hopeless. His posture just kept filling back so fast. Even when I tried to be aggressive, nothing worked. So I devoted one night to mastering this boss. And over time, I learned the attacks. The bow, the swords, and this unparryable attack were actually that Mikiri counter thing. Eventually, I got my first, second phase room, and this is where it all started to take off. I kept trying, over and over, and was able to start saving heals. Soon enough, I was getting really close to the third phase, but never quite there. And that was the problem. Every time, I would fall short, until Theron finally came. I did it. I got to third phase. Now I expected this to be easy and only take a few tries, but um, I was quite mistaken. I kept going, and at the end of the night, this happened. That was it, dude. That was it. That was the run. Oh, man. That was it. But I threw. And I kept trying. But that night, I would have no victory. After a little while, I decided to upgrade my skills and spent a while grinding these same enemies over and over again until my parry bar was better and the bosses was worse. The next day, I got right back on. Run after run after run. I didn't stop, and I had some really good runs. I was really starting to understand this phase, and soon enough... That's Kanichiro! Kanichiro! Oh! Oh! I was really happy you heard that high-pitched yell. I really thought I was him right there. Okay, so after this, I was able to head back to this room and open the door. A swamp area greeted me, and after looking around for a while, I found the guardian ape. And apparently, you can skip this guy for later. But, uh, I don't really know that. And that's probably my life's biggest regret. I know how much I hated Genichiro, but this was just a different type of hard. I had 26 tries, and all of them would go to waste. The first phase was a slaughter. I had no idea what to do. I had learned how to parry from Genichiro, but this was teaching me the opposite. I had to dodge everything. This boss really just felt like a waste of time. I was approaching 26 tries way too quick, but I was hitting second phase. I hit my try limit, but I didn't care. I was too far in to turn back. After a little while, I had the first phase down pretty well. Still, some problems, like using too many heals, but I was winning enough to get a decent shot at the second phase. I also stopped using these things as much, which let me use my firecracker and spear. So I was pretty set for this fight, and with enough time, and after some improvement on the second phase, I finally had my win. And I can't lie, this challenge was crazy. Finally, I was able to walk in here, collect my flowers, and leave. Okay, you know, maybe not this way. I guess I have to go in here and dive underwater to leave. Well, I, I mean, I can't dive, but uh, here is where I realized that this boss is skippable, and this was worse than any challenge I could have imagined. I went the correct way this time, and my next foe was the Armored Warrior. This was a change of pace, not too difficult, and a medieval-looking knight. After two tries, I was figuring out how to win, keeping my distance and dodging instead of parrying, bringing me right to victory. Well, so I thought. I killed him, but he revived. Almost like this man right here. So eventually, I found out that you have to kick this guy off. Kinda weird by the devs, but I got by without a challenge. After this, I found a belt that makes the game harder. These devs are really crazy. Every now and for an easy mode, and they just put a hard one in. So my next target was the folding screen monkeys. Now I got three tries, and this isn't some mini boss either, so I was expecting to lose. And as I got into the fight, I was confused. There was no boss. I guess I have to like kill four monkeys that are scattered around the battlefield. So I started out and got the first two pretty fast. The third one, I did for a little bit, but I got eventually. But this last one was nowhere to be found. I probably went around the battlefield 10 times. So you know, I watched a guide. And I swear, I've been in this place 50 times. Like the devs, for some reason, expecting me to find this. But damn, first try in Sekiro boss. I was given the famous mortal blade and was able to move on to the lone shadow long swordsman. This fight isn't even that hard, but it's not easy either. There's no weird secret to win. So 30 tries, I started up this quest. First phase wasn't bad. Surviving through second phase proved to be a challenge. I was able to go through this other entrance to automatically beat the first phase. Second phase still seemed pretty hard though, but after just a few tries, I got it. I was able to move on to the swamp area, where I met Snake Eyes Shirohigi. The boss, once again, isn't very hard, but he has a few helpers that have missiles. I knew that I could do this, but if I went in without a plan, there's a good chance that I would take 26 tries before even figuring out what to do. But I guess the way I was supposed to approach this was sneaking through here, getting a sneak attack on the first phase and carefully using firecrackers in the second one. This made everything pretty simple and all I needed was a couple tries until I got lucky with these missiles. You know so far it's been pretty good for a while. I walked into this room. Man, if I had to skip the guardian it none of this would have happened. No. 
I can fight both. I got 43 tries, but still did not believe I could win. Now this is gonna start out with the first ape's second phase, and then I have to fight two at once. Now I immediately looked for some type of skip or cheese, and I found this strategy with the mortal blade. I tried for a while, but as many problems arose, I had to give up. And this was a tough decision considering how close I got this time, but it wasn't worth it. As I started playing normally, I was making good progress. I used firecrackers to stun the brown one when the other used this attack eventually leaving me with just one. I did die a few times here due to a lack of heals, but after a little practice, I won. I was fuming with anger after this. I knew that if I saw another ape, I would uninstall. In order to unlock this dive ability, I had to beat one more boss, the Corrupted Monk. I got 10 tries, and I can't lie. They were not going crazy. I was actually doing some decent posture damage, but he would recover it so fast. I guess something called snap beans would help, but I wasn't trying to go get those. Firecrackers wouldn't help either, so I kept searching and found this prosthetic that would let me jump up. I needed to deal damage first, so I took this poison potion, and hopefully this would let me get high enough to land the stealth kill. It wasn't easy, and he was noticing me. I could easily run out of tries before I landed this. I would use this thing to exit the fight, but it would take a while to cast. Luckily, I got it at only four tries and was able to move on. Now here, I thought it was mid game, but damn. I was already faced with the choice of an ending. I could choose the good guy one and keep playing, or go with the menace one and fight the harder final boss fight now. To me, this wasn't even a question. I was not going to take the risk of seeing another ape in this game. But I was finally ready to spin the wheel. I knew I wouldn't even have a chance unless I got a number close to 50, and even then, I doubted I would get it. So, you know, I ended up with three tries, and as expected, I won first try. Now I ain't gonna lie though, this boss was hard. Emma the Gentle Blade was crazy, probably as hard as Genichiro. Once I got the Ishin, I knew this was not going to be quick. I spent a lot of time perfecting Emma before I got to the final phase, and damn, this fire stuff was hard. You know, it took me many tries, many falls, and many disappointments, but eventually, I won. Right here, I got some red pepper flakes. That's the video though, and when I hit a meal, I'm buying a capybara. This game was hard, but not as hard as when I gave myself one day to get every single slate of grace in Elden Ring.